first, 1993, and I'm interviewing Charles William Lavery, and he's just a few days away from 88, right? Um, May 6th. Uh, one time you told me a story about um, you and your friends went, uh, you and your friends went um, train hopping across Missouri. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, there's, uh, uh, one time we left Kansas City, Missouri River was a flood, and um, we got off the train in Jeff City. And uh, we walked across town to the penitentiary, and there's a, a ramp run from a railroad crossing up along the prison wall. And we were going down that ramp, and the guards had a, a crew of convicts down there, and take them to uh, work on the river on the flood. And uh, there was a train going by, and, and that was a train we wanted to catch. Oh. But uh, we couldn't run down there among those convicts and catch the train, so we went over the side of the ramp and dropped down, ran down, caught the train, but we were still on the same side of the train as the guards that were standing at the uh, crossing, uh -huh. and uh, the, the prisoners saw us, and they all began to cheer us, and to give us a big holler, and we were expecting someone to start shooting because there in the rain and everything, we looked just like the convicts. Yeah. But uh, we made it to the train. There was three of us, and uh, one of the boys had never ridden on top of a train. He'd never been on top of a moving train in his life. And it was wet and it was dark. And uh, we were looking for a place that we could get down, get into a car or something. And uh, we were coming up to a tunnel. And there's what they call danglers. Hang back away from the tunnel as a warning. For anyone on top of the car, they'll get these things and then they know that they're coming to a low bridge or uh -huh. some overhead that they, they've got to get down or it'll knock them off. Well, I dropped right away, but this greenhorn was about two cars behind me, and I could see him. He was afraid to jump from the car he was on to the next one because he wasn't on the same level and he was just standing there. So I whistled real loud, and uh, he didn't know what it was for, but he knew he got to get off there, and, and he jumped and went down on all four, and about the time he hit that car while well, we hit the tunnel. Wow. And he knew, <laughs> he knew why I was hollering. That's close. But uh, he, he'd never had a, a chance, that train had picked up speed, and. He never had a chance. Yeah. But well, uh, we found a refrigerator car and, and opened the bunkers, threw some ice out to make room for us, <laughs> and we got down in there on top of the ice. Well, where were we headed? Uh, we were going to Detroit. Oh, this is when you were older and you were going to work. Yeah, you know, we were on our way to Detroit, but our, our next division was St. Louis. And we were in St. Louis the next morning, daylight. Did you have a job waiting for you in Denver? Oh, I mean, no. uh, Detroit? Detroit? No. Just had uh, friends up there. Oh. At that time, I think Aunt Betty was living in Detroit. I know she was uh, a couple of times that I went up there, and I don't know whether this was one of the times or not. Mm. I don't think so. Well, um, one time when you were younger, though, when you were still down in Pittsburgh or Frontenac, didn't you and just some high school friends go traveling around? Uh, you mean uh, ride freight trains? Yeah. Oh yeah, well, we took off there and went all the way to California. 
and uh, I bombed out there. It took us 11 days. I got educated. I came back the same route in five days. Oh. <laughs> Rode a couple of passengers on top. Did you? But that that was fascinating. You know, you get in these railroad yards. They they're not the same today. Today your railroad yards are all flood lighted. In those days they were all, your railroad yards were all dark. Mm -hmm. And they're like those yard bulls out there and they, then the railroad men too that come along they have a flashlight. They'd flash it on the, the door of each car to check the seals. We'd call him the bug. He'd come along, he'd flash the light and turn it off and walk to the next car door and flash it again. And uh, just checking the seals, he'd go from one end of the train to the other. That was only in the, you know, the division points where yeah. they changed engines and... So how'd you uh, keep from getting caught? The crew. Stay in the dark. <laughs> but I, I was going to uh, tell you that uh, when you're in the division point, even in the daytime, it's like playing hide and seek. Of course, uh, it's easier at night than it is in the daytime. Yeah. You know where the train is. You know when it leaves, why well, you got to leave with it. And if you uh, spot the yard bull or what, well, you want to get on the opposite side of the train from him. And of course, you learn the train signals <coughs> too. You know when the engineer signals, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time to go, and he hadn't got a signal yet from the conductor. While well, he gives him a signal and calls, he says he's calling for signal, or he's calling for a high ball. He's ready to go. See, and he had he can't go until the conductor gives him a signal. And then when he gets it, why well, he'd sound two, two, the two whistles. That's a high ball. And you'd know then that he was throwing that thing in gear and getting ready to go. And oh. You'd come out of hiding and get on. Maybe you'd have an empty car spotted or something. And that heavy at night after the bug had passed, but I, you'd go ahead and get in there. Did you take that much car. stuff you with know, you? You really wasn't coming back. So you'd get in there. <clears throat> Did you have much stuff with you? Did you change of clothes or anything? or Trouble or what? No, clothes. What, oh, what'd you pack? No. Or did you have anything? I was wore a a dress shirt under a work shirt, and I'd turn the collar under on the dress shirt like this, see. And then the work shirt was up around this. I wore a, a pair of pants under a pair of overalls. Now those were bib overalls. Uh -huh. And then you got into town, where well, you take your overalls off in that top shirt, and uh, you were presentable. You had a, a clean shirt and uh, had uh, clean pants. So you didn't have a bag or anything? No. We, yeah, everybody that carries uh, anything, they call them a bindle still. Well, a bindle is for a bundle. Anybody carrying a bundle or a sack or a backpack or anything, well, that's a bindle still. Hmm. And a uh, uh, high roller, you know, a high roller, they ride mostly uh, passenger trains. Uh -huh. And uh, <coughs> they travel mostly at night. Uh, occasionally, you can ride a passenger train, maybe from one division to the next, mm -hmm. on a, on a on a real fast uh, train. But whether they're stopping at every depot, you know, in the daytime, while well, you haven't got a chance. Now, was there some summer that that you were like camping in the Ozarks and, and things like that? Uh, 